In those times, when fishing rods had not been invented yet, the primitive man spear used to catch fish with a spear, this weapon is always with him. That's why he is probably called so. While fishing, a huge crocodile jumps out of the water instead of a crucian carp. However, Spear manages to escape from it. Having caught enough fish, he goes home, where his beautiful wife and two kids are waiting for him. On the way, he notices a huge shadow cast by a bloodthirsty pterodactyl. Spear hides from him in a hollow tree, and thanks to the smell of fish, the pterodactyl did not smell the man and flew away. When Spear is near his home cave, he hears the scream of his woman and notices the trail of a predatory dinosaur. They were devoured before his eyes. Spear attacked the predators, but there were more of them, and he would certainly have died. But the dinosaurs were called by their mother, and they ran away. Spear grieved for a long time over the loss of his loved ones. He even wanted to throw himself off a cliff, but he came to his senses in time. During another fishing trip, he noticed a tyrannosaur and decided to kill it in revenge for the death of his relatives. But when he tracked down the beast, it turned out to be a caring mom who brought food to her babies, and her name is Fang. Spear was confused. He didn't want to attack her, but Fang made it clear that she would protect the cubs. And then the same dinosaurs that killed Spear's family appeared and attacked Fang and her cubs. The man helped her fight off the bloodthirsty creatures. Fang's cubs took him for their own, but he couldn't save them. A mother predator showed up and devoured the cubs. Man and Tyrannosaurus fought her and managed to defeat her. Spear struck the decisive blow. He pierced the predator's tiny brain with his spear, and while Fang grieved for her babies, he left. However, the Tyrannosaurus followed him, and when they met again on the beach, Spear realized that he now had a loyal friend. Soon after, the hunt began. Fast and strong, Spear tracked down a boar, chased it down, threw his spear, but missed. Fang appeared out of nowhere and ate the boar. The man didn't like that. He made a battle color like a tyrannosaur and went hunting again. This time, he managed to kill a boar but he couldn't take his prey. The hungry fang seemed faster than a human and devoured another boar. Spear was extremely displeased, but there was nothing he could do, so he caught a millipede and dined on it. Although Fang also sniffed at the insect, the last straw in the overflowing bowl of patience was the uneaten fruit. Spear climbed up the tree and was about to pick them when Fang appeared and began to knock down the fruit, pounding his head on the trunk of the tree. The man grabbed his spear and was ready to attack her, but did not. During the night, Fang snored and sniffed loudly, keeping his partner awake. When he fell asleep, he dreamed of the children and the day the Tyrannosaurus had eaten them. He woke up in a bad mood. The next day, they came to a waterfall where they saw a roe deer grazing peacefully. Spear made it clear that it was his prey, but when he wanted to kill it, Fang appeared and killed the roe deer earlier. Spear couldn't take it anymore. He attacked his friend with his spear and they started fighting. In the process, Fang broke his spear and the man had to use the tools at hand to fight off the angry Tyrannosaur. When they stopped the battle for a moment, they found themselves in the middle of a snake nest. They tried to escape, but a rainstorm that morning washed away the banks of the river and a powerful stream washed away dozens of snakes and sent them towards our heroes. Fang and Spear had to fight with the snakes, but that was not their biggest problem as the water flow carried them to a waterfall. Fong fell from a height into the river, but the man was hurt. Her friend carried him to the shore, and when he came to his senses, she gave him back the spear as a reconciliation. From that day on, they began to hunt together and share the spoils. Fleeing the global cold snap, the mammoths march as a herd through the snow, but the oldest and weakest of them lags behind. He calls out to them, but the herd moves on, leaving the old man to die in the blizzard. When the snowfall ends, he is attacked by Fang and Spear. They roll him to the ground, but the man is in no hurry to deliver the decisive blow. He feels sorry for the giant, but he finishes what he started, and he and Fang have plenty of food and warm clothes. But Fang did not want to wear the skin of the killed mammoth, but the biped was happy to cover it with bones and tusk. Spear makes a sled for the meat, for he can't carry that much on his own, 
At first, he wanted to put Fang in the wagon, but she refused, so he had to pull the sled himself. A terrible blizzard began, and the man and the Tyrannosaur had to hide in the first cave they could find. Meanwhile, a herd of mammoths found their killed kin and decided to take revenge. They saw the hunter's tracks and tracked them down, despite the recent snowfall. While Fang was enjoying the local meat, Spear was reminiscing. He remembered the day he had first given his son a spear and they had gone hunting. The two of them had finished off a deer. In that moment, Spear taught his son not only how to kill, but how to value life. During the night, the cave was destroyed by mammoths. A fight ensued, with the herd gaining the upper hand. While Fang was tearing chunks of flesh off the mammoths, one of them collapsed with spear onto the pile of stones that remained of the cave. The man would surely die under the weight of the beast, and in doing so, he decided to use the tusk of the first mammoth they had killed. Seeing the tusk, the herd stopped. They had almost finished Fang, but did not finish her off. Spear gave them the tusk, and they went to the mammoth graveyard to bury what was left of one of them. A man on a Tyrannosaurus rides at the head of a huge pack of Velociraptors. They seem to be leading these raptors somewhere, but things are not so clear-cut. Because the Velociraptors are hunting them, they attack. Spear fights back with his spear and Fang with his fangs. They manage to hide in the grass for a while, but when they run out of it, the Velociraptors are not far behind. Only Sunset could drive these creatures away. They were afraid of what would follow the darkness. A blood moon rose into the sky, not boding well. Fang and Spear wander into an area with stone columns bearing skulls. They notice someone's eyes among the stones, and then an old caveman comes along with his prey. He breaks his leg and calls to his kin for help, but when one of them appears, a certain creature descends on him from the sky. Spear decides to help the poor man and drags him and his prey into the cave. In a second, all the inhabitants of the cave are hiding in crevices because a giant monster, a mixture of man and bat, appears at the entrance. Fang and Spear kill it, but more and more creatures appear behind it, and the friends realize that it is impossible to kill all of them. The bats immobilize Spear and drag him to a nest on top of a stone column. Fang runs after, and the cavemen find and take Spear's spear. After a dozen unsuccessful attempts to climb the stone column, Fang pretends to be dead, so the monsters will drag her into the nest. Once inside, she sees many corpses and cocoons of victims attached to the walls. A giant spider appears from the depths of the cave and attacks Fang. In the heat of the fight, she smells Spear's scent in one of the cocoons and frees him. The two of them kill the creepy creature and climb down on its web. They are attacked by bats the size of light engine airplanes, and Fang and Spear have to flee. On the way, Spear takes his spear from the caveman and guides Fang into the grass where the Velociraptors are hiding. The bats and Velociraptors scramble together, and they become no match for the Tyrannosaurus and man. Thanks to this, Fang and Spear escape their pursuers. Traveling through the vast expanses of the planet, our heroes find a paradise corner where it is calm and safe. The only trouble is an earthworm, reminding Fang of snakes. This creepy, in Fang's opinion, monster must die, so Spear eats it. They then decide to stop here for a long rest. While Spear bathes, Fang takes a nap. When he surfaces, his friend has disappeared. He goes to look for her, but is knocked out by a sudden blow tied up and carried off to an unknown location. When they come to, it turns out they've been captured by a tribe of primates. They organize something like ritual fights in which gorilla-like apes come together. The strongest ape wins and the tribe leader gives him a drop of a special potion that turns the gorilla into a super strong creature. Fang is pitted against him and the gorilla defeats her. Seeing his friend being beaten and thrown around the ring, Spear struggles to free himself. He finally breaks the bonds, but Fang is already unconscious. Spear thinks she's been killed. In desperation, he climbs up on the chief's pedestal and drinks all the power-enhancing potion. He turns into an incredible monster, kills the gorilla, and then the rest of the primates, leaving no one alive. Only mountains of corpses now fill the valley. When Spear regains his usual form, 
he finds his girlfriend, but she shows no signs of life. When his faithful friend Fang fell in battle with a mutant gorilla, Spear became completely desperate. He couldn't believe that Fang was gone, but as he left, she came to life. Spear found leather bags of water in the primate camp that he interrupted and gave Fang a drink. The vultures had already flown to the smell of dead meat. Spear wasn't about to leave his mate to be torn apart. He soaked the ground with water and covered the wounds with the mixture. Then he tried to lift Fang, but he was unsuccessful. Then he made a stretcher and rolled the Tyrannosaurus onto it. Spear made himself a new spear, picked up the drags, and dragged Fang away from the dead place. He continued to nurse her along the way. And when they stopped to rest and Spear spotted hyenas nearby, he lit several fires around his friend. That night, the hyenas did not dare to attack. In the morning, Spear improved the drags and dragging Fang became easier, but the predators followed them all the way through the forest. Spear found a suitable cave and dragged his friend into it to prevent the hyenas from getting in. He lit the fires again, but danger came from nowhere. Their shelter was full of bloodthirsty insects with incredibly tough shells, but their bellies were soft and Spear easily killed the hordes of bugs. When he was done fighting, he roasted the insects over a fire and served them to Fang. In the morning, he smelled hyenas nearby again. He had to go for provisions, so Spear blocked the entrance to the cave with stones to prevent the predators from reaching Fang. When he returned, the hyenas were already there. He made his way through them and ended up inside the cave. Fang tried to get up, but she was still too weak to stand up to so many predators. So Spear went into battle alone. He put insect shells on his hands and used them as knuckles to crush a dozen hyena heads. But there were too many of them, so Fang had to pull herself together and help her friend drive the enemy away. Meanwhile, the giant Argentinosaurus lived their leisurely lives. They chew grass, walk and raise their young. The long-necked idol is disturbed by the sudden appearance of Parasauralophus. He's emaciated, sick, and aggressive. It pounces on one of the Argentinosaurus and bites it. Longshot throws him off and the zombie dinosaur dies. After a while, Argentinosaurus also turns into a zombie and attacks his kin. He crushes the clutches of eggs and kills the long-necked ones one by one. When he was done with his herd, Spear and Fang came here. They were amazed at what had happened here. But it didn't take them long to marvel. A zombie dinosaur jumped out of an ambush and attacked them. Tyrannosaurus and the human had to run away. They barely escaped from the Argentinosaurus by hiding in a small cave formed in the canyon wall. Longnecked fell to the bottom of this canyon and gave no sign of life. During the night, Spear dreamed that they had been bitten and were also infected with an unknown virus. He woke up and decided to get out of here before it was too late. Fang tried to stop him, but Spear gestured and shouted at her and explained to her that it was the right thing to do. As soon as they were downstairs, the Argentinosaurus got up and chased after them. The friends managed to leap out of the canyon, but the giant got stuck between the walls. But that didn't make Fang and Spear feel any better, for they were on top of a volcano ready to explode. At that moment, the long-necked man broke free from his trap and pounced on them again. Spear and Fang managed to escape, while the zombie dinosaur fell into the boiling lava. However, it couldn't stop him either. He continued to chase his friends, and yet the volcano proved to be stronger. It set the Argentinosaurus on fire, and it burned alive in front of the amazed friends. After this incident, Fang and Spear wandered into the mysterious forest in the middle of the night and saw green flames ahead. They set out to see what kind of creatures had started such a strange fire. Turns out there are witches here, and they're sacrificing a primitive man. The head witch arrives on a pteranodon. She transforms into a mysterious dark entity, launches a green snake at the man, and then sucks all the life energy out of him. This energy concentrates in her belly, forms into a baby, and the witch takes the child out. She gives it to one of the witches to nurture and raise the child. At this point, the main witch's pteranodon notices the strangers, he informs the mistress and she sends her sisters to capture Spear and Fang. The human successfully fights off the witches, but Fang is less fortunate. She is bewitched by a witch named Lula. She captures Spear along with Fang. They tie him to sacrificial staves and prepare him for rebirth. 
Lula arrives, riding Fang, and Spear begins to call out to his friend. She throws off the witch's spell, but Lula casts another, stronger one. However, Fang gets free again. Lula becomes curious as to why the Tyrannosaurus listens to the human and fights her spell. She opens a portal to the past and learns how Fang's children died and how she met Spear. Then she also looks into Spear's past. She understands and shares their pain as she herself lost a daughter. The girl was chasing butterflies and didn't notice the cliff. She fell off it and crashed it to her death. After that, Lula became an outcast in her Tiba. The witch is forced to prepare a spare for the sacrifice, and when she makes special patterns on him, a butterfly appears. Lula realizes it is her daughter talking to her, asking her to help the man. At night, when the head witch reappears, Lula kills her Tyranodonna and confronts her. Together with Fang, she fights the witch who has turned into a wolf, but dealing with her is not easy. So Lula sends the enchanted Fang away from here. She carries Spear on her back. When the head witch kills Lula, the spell breaks and Fang becomes herself. Lula is transported to a beautiful world full of color and light. Here she meets her dead daughter. When Fang and Spear have run far enough away, they stop for the night. In the same forest, a super fast and deadly creature was at work. It had killed an innocent saber-toothed tiger that may have been looking for a sloth and mammoth named many here. The man and the tyrannosaur heard screams, and in the morning, they also found the mangled body of the Smilodon. Fang was frightened and tried to get the man away from the place as soon as possible. The next night, the creature went out hunting again, easily killing a herd of triceratops. Spear hears the screams of the herbivores and wants to find out what has scared them so much, but Fang stops him. She is frightened and forbids her friend to move away from the fire. In the morning while fishing, they hear some noise and are alarmed. The night killings have frightened them and now they fear every rustle. Spear climbs a tall tree to see where the crows are flying to, and he sees the place where the triceratops were killed. In the afternoon, a strong wind rises, and the friends hide from it behind a rock. A branch scrapes on a neighboring rock, but they think it is an unknown monster that wants to attack them. During the night, they have trouble falling asleep by the fire, but then the fire goes out and they are awakened by a strange noise. They realize that the killer is out hunting again and run away. When they find themselves in the fog, an unknown creature attacks them. It is too fast to be seen, and incredibly strong. Spear starts swinging his spear at random and accidentally hits the stone tip against a rock. A spark erupts and the attacker is startled. The spark ignites a fire and Spear sets the spearhead on fire to make a torch out of it. He then jumps on top of Fang and they catch up to the enemy. They surround it with fire and when it has nowhere to run, Spear pierces the monster with his spear. It is burned alive. Some time after this incident, Fang and Spear were fishing on the coast. Suddenly, a shaven-headed, shackled woman emerged from the water. She was being chased by a Liopleurodon. The man and the Tyrannosaurus fought the sea monster and defeated it. Then they went ashore and caught up with the frightened woman. And if Spear was not afraid of her, Fang terrified her. However, Spear showed that the Tyrannosaur was not dangerous, and the woman stopped running away from them. He built a fire, and the three of them settled down for the night. In the middle of the night, the woman woke up and prayed while looking at the moon. The next day, they set out on their journey. Spear and Fang get some meat and start eating it, but the woman does not want to eat it raw. She finds a turtle shell, brings root vegetables and fruit, and makes soup. Fang appreciates her cooking, but Spear does not like the soup. At night, the woman prays again, and in the morning, she makes it clear that she is tired of her shackles. Spear and Fang quickly dispose of them. The grateful prisoner tells them her name is Mira. On the road, she makes a bow and arrow for herself and shows how much more effective these weapons are than a spear. After dinner, Mira tells how she was enslaved and how she escaped by jumping off the ship. The next day, they enter an area fenced with skull stakes. Here they find a cave and stay there for the night, but in the morning they are attacked by Pithecanthropus. They drag Mira away with them, and Fang and Spear follow. 
When they catch up with the tribe, all the Pithecanthropus turn out to be dead and have been killed by arrows. The friends follow the footsteps of the people with shoes coming to the seashore. Here they see the ship on which Mira is being taken away. On its sails is the same symbol that was tattooed on the back of the woman's head, realizing that he has lost another person dear to him. Spear speaks her name for the first time. Mira. 